Robert, approaching 13, has certain ambitions, certain fears. On the one hand, he dreams of escaping to a world that's full of love and of peace. He longs for the comfort and respect given a basketball star. On the other hand, he fears that he could end up, as his uncle did, a victim of the streets. Children like Robert, living in this world, a world he describes rather eloquently and pointedly, have to learn how to swim, not sink. Whom do we hold on to? Who has given us messages, ideas, thoughts, values that will give us the strength to successfully grow up, to be a strong person and a good person? My mama, my mama, she's a good mother, you know. She tell us right from wrong, stuff like that. She be telling me, say, boy, if you don't stop right now, you're going to go to jail. My daddy, I don't never talk about nothing to him. I got his ways, though, like having my own way and stuff like that. But at first I thought him and my mama was going to get a divorce because he wasn't home with us, where he's supposed to be. He was staying with this lady then. I just said to myself, he left, he just left. I was with someone else, and uh, you know, the things come to you where you say, well, I'm here with someone else and some children, and then I have a wife with children, and uh, you know, I'm not married to this woman, but I'm still married to this woman. You start thinking, well, I'm not doing the right thing. I've been separated for about five years away from them, but those days ago, now I'm home. <laughs> That's the most important thing, is that I'm home now. When my husband wasn't home, I got a lot of moral support from the church, and that was good, and that it took a lot of the pressures off sometimes. But the families are falling apart. But God does not want that, because God can take little and do much. Say, I'm working, but I'm tired. We are a family at this church. We're involved in each other's business. The greatest challenge for Robert has been no example of a male in his home. So we're trying to become a stabilizing force in his life. I remember when Robert said to me, my dad is home. My dad's home. My dad's home. He was elated. He was excited. Robert has overcome a lot of obstacles in his life. Robert could have been in jail now. He could have been selling drugs, carrying guns. But because of the strength of that black woman, his mom, who believed in raising their children right, stuck with it. Even now, she's in school trying to better herself trying to come off welfare and be a part of society. She presented him an alternative. I can't really say how my values will go down the road, but the major difference in a child turning out successful comes from encouragement at home. Um, although sometimes, you know, children don't turn out all the time, like parents wish them to, but it really comes from encouragement from home. Robert is struggling to make sense of many contradictory messages. The world he sees as he walks to school or goes out to play doesn't offer much hope or inspiration. By teaching him honesty and responsibility and discipline, Robert's mother, his church, and now his father are trying hard to give him the moral strength he needs to combat the physical and spiritual violence that's all around him. Robert's challenge is, am I going to trust what I hear in church? Am I going to trust my mother's idealistic voice? What kind of a person am I going to be within a family? Am I going to be a responsible, caring husband or father? Or am I going to be, hey, 
I have these impulses, I have these desires, and boy, they're satisfied. And the hell with my family, and the hell with my neighborhood, and the hell with the world I live in. The struggle this boy is waging is the struggle we're all waging within ourselves and with one another. The shared struggle to affirm our humanity and our responsibility as citizens. And as we go from one neighborhood to the next and one community to, next, to the next, this is a struggle that we ought to think about. My name's Haley Fairclough. I live with my mom, my dad, and my brother. We live on Signal Mountain in a subdivision called Applewood. I like dolphins, so I kind of want to be a marine biologist. I'd live in Monkey Mile, Australia. I've read about that place, and dolphins will always swim up to you, and you can feed them and stuff. Haley is a 13-year-old girl living in comfort, if not luxury in a fine house, located in a fine neighborhood. Obviously, wealthy people don't have to struggle for bread, for money to pay bills, by and large. On the other hand, a relentless striving for success can have its own risks. I'm pretty much spoiled. <laughs> I have everything I ask for, I always get it. I have a lot of things, including a TV, a VCR, Super Nintendo, um, a boombox, around 70 or 80 Barbie dolls that I used to play with all the time. I think if you have everything you want, you don't have anything to ask for anymore. Even if you don't get it, you can still ask for something. But when you have everything, you can't ask for anything. My parents, really, the only thing they tell me that's really wrong is don't talk about people behind their backs. Because it's just going to hurt you, not them, really. I don't know, really. I don't know if there's right or wrong out there. I think the most important thing, how people treat each other, is that they're kind to each other. A good person is a person that does things from the heart. A bad person is a person that hurts other people intentionally. Um, the only bad person I can think of, I don't know him. Hitler. Well, I don't know. I don't know if Hitler was bad or not. Because he wanted everything to be perfect, but he wanted it his way. He didn't like Jews until he killed them all. So, yeah, I guess that is bad, but uh, I don't know. Values. It's hard for me to even determine what values I have, except just... Like I said, it sounds so simplistic just to be kind and to love people. Um, but as far as values, I mean, I would expect her already to know not to steal or cheat or lie. And maybe I don't have a good definition of what values are. I don't know how I can teach anybody much of anything. Um, if, if anything... Um, I can provide a learning opportunity, perhaps, by example. Um, and I can be willing to let someone else learn. A suit? Oh, what? what? I got, yeah, I like it. Yeah. We are isolated up here. We don't have a high crime rate. It's safe for my kids to go out. It's safe for my kids to ride their bicycles to the pool. The struggles here certainly don't involve the need of money or comfort. The struggles probably come from family relationships, comes with perfectionism and workaholism, the problems that go with, quote, successful people. I've had my own set of difficulties with compulsive behavior and participate actively in a recovery process. And part of the damage that I did to Brant Haley and Gene and myself was having some screwed up notions about what success was and ought to be. The hardest thing was last year when we found out my dad was an alcoholic. 
My mom and him would have lots of fights, and a lot of times I went in my closet and <laughs> put my ear up to the side of the wall and listen to him. Oh. My dad, he was hurting my mom, who was making her upset all the time. I felt like I felt like I hated my dad because he was just like a monster. All he did was argue and talk loud and yell at you and just do all this other stuff. But I mean, now he's like really nice, and I like him a whole lot more. The day that Chip left, these two people from work told me that Chip had a drinking problem and was being put into a rehabilitation hospital. I said, Mom, what happened? She said, oh, this is going to take a while. Um, Dad's an alcohol. Like, and I'm like, well, what's that? You know, she's going, Dad drank too much all the time, you know. I had so many questions. And, you know, I, I was, you know, I knew that my dad was going to come back a different person. And I was always asking questions constantly about what Dad would be like when he got back and, well, he still loves us when he comes back. I handled it real well when my dad was going through all that, but after I just kind of collapsed, you know, I said, hey, wait, my dad lied to me all the time, and I'm just letting him get away with it. But I had to forgive my dad. I had to, you know, I had to forgive my brother for getting mad at my dad. I had to forgive myself for being mad. This is from... Oh, oh, I like this. What a surprise. What We're just trying to do the best that we can with what we have. We do make a conscious effort to be more thoughtful, less in need of perfection and control than we were nine months ago. You want to draw your family, a picture of your father, your mother? <laughs> Not really, because then we have to draw... If you want me to, I will. I beg your pardon? If you want me to, I will. Okay, why don't you draw a picture of your father and a picture of your mother? Are you going to analyze the drawings? You know what I'll do? I'll let you analyze the drawings. I'm not going to know what they mean. Okay. I find her to be an intelligent and thoughtful girl who is perhaps more introspective than she's ready to acknowledge to herself, let alone to us, who is plagued by loneliness and sadness, who has seen a lot of a family's unhappiness and doesn't quite know what to do with it and so tries to blot it out. Now here are the parents, separated, not close together, each with glasses. You'll notice that the mother, sunglasses, we're not going to look into her eyes, nor perhaps can she see or want to see a lot. The father is armless. There are no legs, and they're not grounded on land or grass or pavement. Here's the brother, who, who no one has seen wearing sunglasses, and yet there he is with the family motif of eyes that are blotted out. It's as if the person is, wants to be invisible to himself or herself and, of course, to others. Here is a self-portrait by Haley. Ah, the eyes are clear. No sunglasses, but very dark pupils. She's wide-eyed, but as we look within the eyes, there's that core of blackness, maybe even sadness or despair. A house of strangers. I gotta go, bud. Okay. When are you gonna be back, then? Um, I'll, I'll see you, um, a week from Friday night. You will? Yeah, because Mom and I, Mom's meeting me in New York this weekend. Oh, remember? a week from this week Friday? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Well, you're gonna be gone this weekend, too. Well, I don't get to see you for two weeks. I know. Oh, uh, well, almost. Well, next time we do that, we get to all go to Santa Fe. Good. Okay? See ya. Bye. Bye. See you two weeks. Don't worry, I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. I'll talk to you. Good. You better call me. All right? 
did it. I think Haley is perplexed with respect to how one behaves with affection and trust toward other people, even your own parents. This is a girl who is only now beginning to know what it is to live not only in affluence, but in a family that is struggling and yearning for a lived moral life. Alcoholism stopped them in their tracks, and this was the occasion for a family's strengthening through reflection, through consideration, and a kind of moral seriousness that they summoned for themselves. For all of us, Life is a moral journey, and the journey starts for children at the very beginning. Children begin to learn what they should not and must not do. We have to protect our children from doing certain things, or else they'll get into trouble, they'll be injured or even killed. We have to say no as well as yes to children, even in the first months of their life. And if there is no one to say no as well as yes, if there is no one to be a moral guide to the child, then this child is in extreme jeopardy.